All right, how are you guys doing today? It's Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to find trig values using your TI-84 graphing calculator. So go ahead and get that out and make sure you have that ready. All right, here we go. Now, before we get started, there's two important skills you got to know. First is where each of the six trig functions are positive, and the second is how to set your calculator to the correct mode. Now, knowing where each of the six trig functions are positive, a lot of times you'll hear a mnemonic all students take calculus. Now in each of those quadrants the reciprocal function of sine, cosine, and tangent are also going to be positive. So you're going to have to make sure that you know where each of the six trig functions are positive. Second thing is how to set the calculator in the correct mode. And a lot of times you'll get a hint on this based on your directions. Now to do that, like in these directions right here, you'll see the phrase zero is less than equal to theta is less than equal to 360 so then that tells me I need to be in degree mode so if this were the case I would set my calculator up so that my mode is in degree on the other hand I might see the similar directions but this time I've got between 0 less than equal to theta is less than equal to 2 pi which means I need to be in radian mode so that's something you're going to have to do is critically analyze the directions that you're given because that'll tell you which mode to set your calculator in. So let's take a look at our first example here. Find the values of theta for the following equations of 0 is less than equal to theta is less than equal to 2 pi or less than 2 pi. Now what this kind of tells you direction wise 0 to 2 pi that's one full circle one revolution now when I take a look at my function here I have cosine of theta equals negative 0 0.8471 so that tells me cosine is negative so when I'm kinda of thinking about that I, I wanna look at which quadrants theta would be negative my cosine is negative up here in quadrant number two as well as down here in quadrant number three so if I kinda of think about that just real quickly I'm gonna have two different angles and I'm going to call one of them theta 1, and I'm going to call the other one theta 2. So I'm going to have theta 1 and theta 2, and I've got to find what those two numbers, what those two angles are going to be that would give me a value of negative 0.8471. And to do that, we're going to go back to geometry, because I'm sure you probably remember this from geometry. Now, when you're given cosine of, an, of theta, equals blop, some number or value, sometimes it'll be a fraction. In order to solve that, we're going to write down theta, and actually theta 1, is going to be equal to our cosine of negative 0.8471. Now when we do that, we're going to get a value. So we're going to plug that into our calculator and see what value that we have. But what I want to make sure is that my calculator is in the right mode. How do I know what mode I should be in? Well, I look right here for 0 to 2 pi. So that tells me my mode needs to be in radian. So make sure your calculator is set up so it looks just like mine. Once it is, then we're good to go. What I'm going to do next is actually type in the arc cosine. And that, if you look down here, right above the cosine, you see in blue cos negative 1. So that's where arc cosine or inverse cosine lives. Same thing with arc sine and arc tangent. They're all right there. So to get to that, you're going to have to hit your second key first, and then arc cosine. Then go ahead and type in the value. Now when you type that in and hit enter, we'll get 2.581. So theta 1 has a value of 2.581. Now that's this number up here. So that's 2.581. Now to get all the way down to this other spot, down here when I'm going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 3 this is where I'm going to actually have to find a reference angle to figure out what that reference angle is I'm going to have to invoke pi so to find my reference angle so now I'm, we're actually going to change a little bit here we're going to find our reference angle so let me change colors because our notation for that is going to be a little bit different so to find our reference angle since this is above the x-axis I want to figure out what that angle is to get me back to the x-axis. And the x-axis, well, that's just pi. Well, another number for pi, we'll talk about that in a minute, as you guys know, is 3.14. So we're going to take pi and we're going to subtract theta 1 to give us that value. Now, we're going to use approximations here, and we're going to use 3.14 for pi. And theta 1, we just found that 
to be 2.581. When we do that, that will give us our reference angle. So now we end up with our reference angle 0 0.559. But wait, we're not done, because that just gives me my reference angle. Now with my reference angle, to get to theta 2, I actually have to move that much down away from the x-axis. So I'm going to start out with pi, or 3.14, and this time I'm going to have to add that reference angle. So to come up with theta 2, I'm going to have to do that. So theta 2 is going to be pi plus my reference angle. So those two angles together, that's going to get me to theta 2. Now at this point, it's just going to be kind of a substitution piece. And again, we're just going to approximate. So I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. And then I'm going to add to the, that 0 0.559 that I just found is my reference angle. So when I'm all done doing my arithmetic, I end up with the value for theta 2. So 3.699 is my other angle. So we get theta 2 to be 3.699. So that's my other angle. Now my first angle, don't forget the first one. Our first angle, theta 1, was 2.581. So those are the two angles that have a cosine of negative 0 0.8471. That's not so bad, but again, you've got to make sure that you pay attention to mode and also that there are two different values, one in the second quadrant and one in the third quadrant. And we're going to actually have to use reference angle stuff to help us come up with that second value, that second theta. All right, so we're going to practice this a little bit more. We've got two other examples to take a look at. So now, on to the next one. Now in this problem, we've got to find the values of theta between 0 and 2 pi. So we're in the correct mode. And we've got tangent this time of 3.9283. So first thing I want to do again, tangent. Where's tangent going to be positive? Well, tangent is going to be positive over here in quadrant number one. So we would have that as one of our marks. And of course, tangents are positive over here in quadrant three. Now notice, they are diagonal from each other. Anytime you have two angles that are diagonal like that, meaning one's in quadrant one and the other angle's in quadrant three, how do you get from here all the way over to here? Well, that's a semicircle. That's halfway around. And a full revolution around would be two pi, but we're only going halfway around. So once I find one of the angles to get the other one, all I'm going to have to do is add pi to that. But more on that in a minute. So again, when we go to solve this, we know we've got two angles, theta one and theta two, and we're going to go ahead and find theta one first. And to do that, we're going to find the arc tangent, so tan negative 1, of this decimal, 3.9283. So we'll go to our calculator and we'll just type that in. Now when we go ahead and type that in, arc tangent of 3.9283, we get a value of 1.322. So that is going to be the value for theta 1. So theta 1 is going to be 1.322. Now to find the other one, to find theta 2, so I'm going to go halfway around, so I'm going to have to add pi. And then to find theta 2, all we're simply going to do is take pi, and we're going to add that to our theta 1, the first theta that we found. Because they're halfway around from each other, one's in quadrant 1, one's in quadrant 3, a half a revolution. So all we're going to do is just add pi to that. So using our approximations now, we're going to use... 3.14 for pi, and then the 1.322 that we just found. And when we add that together, our second angle is going to have a value of 5.161. So that is one angle right there, and the other angle, the first one we found, theta 1, is 1.322. So those are the two angles that have a value of 3.9283. I and mean, that's all well and good. We've done one that, you know, that's involving cosine, one that's involving tangent, but when you have ones that are involving one of the other functions, such as secant, cosecant, and tangent, we've got to do something a little bit different for those. And those, we're going to do one of those type of problems next. So here we go with that one. Now for this example, we're going to work with cosecant, and cosecant is going to be positive in quadrant number one, of course, because everything is positive there, and cosecant is also going to be positive over here in quadrant number two. So I've got two quadrants that are right next to each other. 
So again, I'm going to have to find two different angles that have a value of 4.2706. Now to start to solve this problem, after we recognize where cosecant is positive, what we're going to do next is we're going to change cosecant into sine because they're reciprocal functions. So cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. So I'm going to rewrite this like this to start with. Now what I'll do is I will take the reciprocal of 1 over sine is just sine theta, but then I'm going to take the reciprocal of 4.2706, that's going to be 1 over 4.2706. So that's how I'm going to get started with this. Then when I go to find my first angle, theta 1, I'm going to take the arc sine of 1 over 4.2706. And the reason why I go about that this way is because there is no cosecant button on my calculator. There's no secant button on the calculator and there is no cotangent button in the calculator. So when you have one of those functions, you have to change it to its reciprocal trig function and then you can go ahead and work with it. We're going to go ahead and go over to our calculator and we're going to type in arc sine, so second and then sine negative one, and then we'll go ahead and type in the value that we had before. Now to do this, here's one of these tricks on the new operating system. If you hit alpha and then y equals, notice that very first thing it says n slash d. So that'll be numerator denominator. So I like this because it sets it up real nicely for us and actually looks like what the problem is. So we'll have one in the numerator and then we'll just type in. So now did you get the same thing I did? 0.236, hopefully you did that, you keyed that in correctly. Now, if you don't have the newer operating system or you have an 83 calculator, then it's going to look a little bit like this. The older operating system, you would just enter it as arc sine and then one slash 4.2706 and you'd get the same value of 2 or 0.236. So either way you type it into your calculator, you'll get the same thing. So that gives me the value of theta 1. So theta 1 had a value of 0 0.236. So that's up here in quadrant 1. So let's kind of think about that here for a second. So quadrant 1, that's where theta 1 is. Now my other angle over here in quadrant number 2, theta 2, that spot. Now since I want to go 0 0.236 backwards, that's actually going to be my reference angle because my original angle, theta 1, was in quadrant number 1, which means my reference angle would have the same value. So I'm going to go backwards 0.236 because that's the reference angle. So that'll actually give me what the value of theta 2 is. So I would just do pi minus my first angle. And then when I key everything in, so 3.14 minus 0 0.236, when you do that arithmetic, you'll end up with a value of 2.904. So one of my angles is going to be 2.904. And then my other angle, theta 1, which is up in quadrant 1, that's going to be 0 0.236. All right, so now this video is just about over, and you should be able to find trig values using your TI-84 graphing calculator. Thanks for watching. You guys get out there with your buddy TI, and you solve some of these types of problems. Peace out.